The decline of the Oyo Empire in the early 1800s led to a series of civil wars between different states in Yoruba land, with Ibadan emerging as the most dominant. In 1840, Ibadan became the main bulwark against further progress of the Fulani invasion. The same year, Ibadan defeated the Fulani invaders at Oshubu, which checked the jihad movement of the Fulanis to the south of Yoruba land. However, the defeat did not deter the Fulanis, who soon turned their attention to the eastern part, attacking the Ekiti town of Otun. This led to an outbreak of hostilities between Ibado and Ilori. Ibado enjoyed great success as they had developed into a military meritocracy and were able to dislodge the Fulani jihadist at Otun. In 1862, Ibado turned its attention to Ijai and successfully defeated its western rival. At the time, Ibado had control of Ijai and had turned into a powerhouse amongst the Yoruba people. Seeking to extend its frontiers of domination, Ibado soon turned its gaze to other Yoruba city-states, and this eventually culminated in the Yoruba Civil Wars. The Yoruba Civil War of the 19th century can be divided into three stages. The first stage identified the collapse of Oyo and the breakout of the Owu War, which was the first of the Civil War in 1821. The second stage in 1861 was distinguished by the power rivalry between Ibado and the Abelkuta Ijai forces. There was a struggle for power caused by the decline of Oyo. This period marked the first intervention which the British had with the Yoruba civil wars and their affairs. The third stage saw the rise of the Ekitik Barakbo and other coalition forces of Ijebu and Ilori who were against the military might of Ibadan. The wars ended in 1893. The Oyo Empire was one of the largest and most prosperous empires in West Africa between the 18th and 19th centuries. The empire dominated the lives of the Yoruba people for many years. Led by the ruler known as the Alafi, the Oyo Empire had a thriving slave institution, which not only helped boost the economy of the empire, but also aided in the success of the administration of Oyo. The Alafi although with supreme authority, was kept in check by a group of chiefs of seven of the non-royal lineages. These chiefs, known as the Oyomisi, served as the head advisory council to the Alafi. While the role of the Alafi was acknowledged, this system of decentralization was in place to check his authority. However, and unfortunately, the struggle for power and a series of internal conflicts especially between the Alafi and the Oyomisi, would lead to the eventual collapse of the great Oyo Empire. The gradual decline of the empire came in the early 1750s when Bashonga, the leader of the Oyomisi secured the suicides of two Alafins, Labisi and Awobioju. His tyrannical reign came to an end around the year 1770, when Alafi Abiodun sought help from the provinces of Oyo and eventually killed the Bashorun. As a result, the influence and power of the Oyomisi were diminished and the control of the Alafi was never the same again. The most devastating revolt, which dealt a huge blow to the authority of the Alafi, was the one led by Afonja, the Areono Kakanfo at Ilori. As Areono Kakanfo, Afonja was the commander-in-chief of the provincial army and also one of the most important and powerful officers serving the Alafi. 
Afonja in a plot with other prominent chiefs of the Oyo Messi, as Allah Fiaole, a Biodun's successor, to commit suicide. This was due to Afonja's lack of belief in the capabilities of the Alafi and also Afonja's quest for power. This event occurred in the year 1796 and the Oyo Messi would choose Prince Adebo as the next Alafi to the disdain of Afonja. Unable to stomach the turn of events, Afonja declared independence from Oyo and retired to Ilori. He would engage in a series of battles with Oyo which would end in a stalemate for years. Eventually, Afonja would form a coalition with Fulani Muslims who were keen on extending the jihad of Usman Danfodio into Yoruba land. However, the romance would not last for long as the jihadists around the year 1824 turned against Afonja, killed him and incorporated Inlori into the Sokoto Caliphate. The Oyo Empire soon began to lose its military dominance. The Egba, a territory under the empire, also revolted and gained independence around 1796. Owu, the empire's main ally, was besieged by Ife and Ijebu forces around 1822. Sokoto forces based in Ilori constantly attacked the city. By 1837, Ilori had gained absolute control over Oyo and most of the other important towns within its surrounding areas. The collapse of the Oyo Empire by the Fulanese led to the scampering away to safety by some subgroups of the empire. These refugees regrouped themselves in New Oyo and formed several city-states. These city-states had their political systems and while they functioned as autonomous entities, they maintained technical allegiance to the Alafi of Oyo. Of these city-states, Ibado and Ijai were the most powerful. To check the excesses of the Fulanese in Ilori and to stop any further encroachment, Ibado and Ijai had the responsibility from Allah Fiatiba to provide the needed security for the other city-states. Ijai protected Yoruba towns in the western provinces while Ibado protected the towns in the eastern regions. In 1840, Ibano defeated the Fulani invaders at Oshobo, slaughtered them all the way to Ofa near Ilori and captured their horses, which they eventually used as food. Afterwards, in 1862, Ibado defeated Ijai after the death of Kurumi. Several battles fought by the Ibado against the towns of Ikiti and Ijesha were punitive. The wars were to bring independent towns under the authority of Ibado. By 1877, Ibado had brought almost all the Yoruba states under the authority of the Alafi. Ibadan's presence in the towns were represented by its messengers. The administration was marked by ruthlessness and oppression. The eastern region had become a ground to obtain and draw in slaves for the Ibadan soldiers. A newly installed military commander in Ibadan proved himself by embarking on military expeditions. The war loots were used to increase their wealth and the captives were made as slaves and used to boost their armies. The people of Ijesha and Ekiti found their subjective behavior towards their towns unacceptable. They appealed to the Areono Kakanfo, Momodu Latosa, to check the excesses of the Ajeles, but the subjective treatment continued. This built up hostilities towards the Ibada and the Ijesha, Ekiti, and their foreign forces formed the confederation called Ekiti Parapo to revolt against the Ibado hegemony. The first contact between Ibada and the Eastern Yoruba forces was between Ibada and Ekiti. It was called Ogun Jalumi, which ended in a shame of defeat for the Ekiti forces. The Jalumi or the Battle of Ikirun took place in the northeast of present-day Oshun State, Nigeria, on November 1, 1878. It was a fraction of the main conflict called the Ibado War or Ekitikbarakwa War. 
the Ibanon forces defeated the rebellious Yoruba soldiers from Ilori, Ijesha, Ekiti, and Ila. This defeat led the Ekiti to call on Ogidengbe, a tall, fiery fellow, for assistance. He had refused to join the war as the Ibado were his benefactors from where he gained military training. Eventually, Ogedengbe later joined the Ekitik Barakbo. Other Yoruba towns were also enlisted to join the Ekitik Barakbo. They included the Egbe, Akoko, Egbomina, Kaba, and the Oworo. Ijebu and Lagos also assisted in the war. They went against the Western Yoruba Ibado and its allies, like the Mudakeke, the Ofa, and Oyo dominions on the Ibado side. The civil war was a long, bitter one, which was said to have lasted for 16 years with severe casualties on both sides. The original cause of the war was said to have been the decline of the Oyo Empire and the immediate cause being the exertion of dominance by the Ibado military on the Yoruba towns in the northeastern regions, which caused them to revolt against Ibado, who had a desire to rule over the towns following the decline of the Oyo Empire. The use of European weapons contributed to the outcomes of the Yoruba civil wars in the 19th century. The Ijebu in the Owu War first made use of firearms. They took advantage of their control of the trade routes to Lagos to acquire European guns. It was in the Owu War that firearms were first used. The fall of Owu was attributed to the lack of European firearms by the defenders. Guns were scarce in the first half of the 19th century. It was weapons like swords, axes and spears that were used in battle. Ibadan was initially involved in another war between Egba and Ijebu over trade in 1877, before their contact with the Eastern Yoruba forces. Egba attacked Ibadan traders who came from Port Novo with firearms. Ijesha and Ekiti took advantage of this war and declared independence in 1878. They massacred Ibadan officials in Igbomina, Ekiti and Ijesha. This war would last for 16 years. The Ibado and Ekitik Barakwa forces met at Kiriji. The control of the trade routes was an issue. Egba, Ondo and Ijebu were the three main routes. The Ondo route was opened by the British due to the frequent closure of the other roads. Ondo was the main supply route for both sides during the war. With a change in the course of the war, the Ekitik Barakwa soon gained the advantage. They got arms and ammunition from Brazil returnees and other Yoruba people outside the country who supported their quest. They were also supplied with powerful rifles and guns, which gave them an edge over Ibadan. Ibadan faced devastating effects due to the new weapons. If they had not acquired modern weapons from the Ijebu coast, they would have lost the war. Ibadan also faced many difficulties during the war. Apart from how well equipped in weaponry the Akitik Barakbo forces were, they also had to fight on five fronts. One in the south against Egba, two in the same south against Ijebu, three in the east at Kiriji against the Akitik Barakbo under the command of Ugedengbe, four in the north at Ofa and finally at Ileife, whose soldiers had joined an alliance against Ibadan in 1882. Despite the disadvantage that the Ibadan forces faced, the five fronts could not defeat them. The British colonialists then intervened with interest in trade during the period of the scramble and partitioning of Africa. Attempts to resolve the wars had begun around 1879 and 1880 before the war eventually came to an end 13 years later. The Alafi and the Oni were involved but neither was to be trusted. Lagos was instructed by London and Accra not to intervene even though the war was having adverse effects on its economy. From 1882 to 1884, the British did nothing but after 1885, things changed. 
The scramble and partitioning of Africa was soon to take place and the British had to act because of the French. Also, those involved in the war were slowly getting tired. In 1886, peace negotiations began and a ceasefire was called through the efforts of Bishop of Undo, Charles Phillips, and the Anglican priest and Yoruba historian, the Reverend Samuel Johnson. Under Governor Corlinius Alfred Moliné of Lagos, the parties signed a treaty to provide independence for Ekitik Barakpo towns and Modakeke to be evacuated to suit Ife. Although the war was still dragged on as some of the forces were adamant to disband. In 1888, an employee with a French company had come to negotiate with the Egba chiefs to sign a treaty allowing for the construction of a rail line link with Port Novo. This was a direct threat to the British and their interest. Their fears of the French became justified, although the treaty was not endorsed. Britain began to take aggressive measures in gaining control of the interiors. Governor Gilbert Carter succeeded Moliné and arrived in Lagos on February 3, 1891, and understood that the issue was in the control of the trade routes between Ijebu and Egba. These led to the brutal invasion of Ijebu in 1892. The trade routes of Ijebu and Igba were then opened. In 1893, Governor Carter made treaties with Egba and Oyo and was finally able to persuade the Ekitik Barakpo and Ibadan forces to disband. The Egba nation then opened their road to Ibadan and the construction of a railway followed. The Yoruba civil wars majorly brought an adverse effect on the economic activities of the Yoruba land. Oyo, known in the 18th century as the most significant exporter of slaves, declined in a civil war after the 1820s. The new power centers of Ibadan, Owo, Wari, and Abeokuta fought for the slave route to access a new supply of slaves. The civil wars gave access to the slave raiding of the Yoruba people by those who needed capital to gain firearms to continue in the vicious wars. The wars also sowed a seed of discord between the people which affected economic progress. The civil war also led to the displacement of people which affected economic activities in Yoruba land. There was a southward migration of refugees who had been displaced and rendered homeless by the wars which increased the population of Ibado and Abelkuta. On the other hand, the wars brought about adverse casualties to both sides. Under the guise of ending the slave trade, the British colonizers stamped their authority over the Yoruba states and annexed all of the West as their dominion. The British set their sight to dominating all of present-day southern Nigeria, especially the Niger Delta, where they sought to control the palm oil trade there. However, the conquest would not be easy as they were met with strong resistance by two prominent leaders in the region, King Jaja of Okobo, and Governor Nana Olomu of the Benin River. You can check out the full story in our next episode.